let's say you have kilos and you want to like, convert it to pounds or you want to convert meters to feet and inches or you want to convert currencies or you want to convert dates from US style to European style. Whatever it is you want to convert, I'm going to show you how to do it on this video. My name is David and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets and all types of apps. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start by doing kilos into pounds and then we're going to do meters and then we're going to do currencies, dates and then currencies as of a historic date. So to start off, I'm going to use equals convert. Now, this is a great function. Press tab to lock that in. That can convert from any unit to another unit. So I'm going to click the number is this one. And then from unit, I get this drop down, but I can do whatever I want, or I can also start typing it to get what I want. So in this case, I'm going to go with gram. So I can press tab and then two units. I'm going to do LB. If you want to make it searchable, you need to do speech marks before LBM. Perfect. And I close my brackets and I get this. But of course, that doesn't quite work because I had 77 kilos. So I have to go back into my formula and multiply it by 1000 like that. And then I can drag it down to get this to work. All right, next one, we're going to also use convert. I'm going to use equals convert. Press tab to lock that in. This is my meters. So I'm going to do in speech marks meters. Now it doesn't have centimeters or kilograms or things like that. It only has the core unit when it comes to metric, but when it comes to imperial, you can do feet, you can do inches and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to do tab to lock that in. Always when you see what you want in blue, press tab to lock it in much, much faster than using the clicking or browsing for it. So in inches, 178 is 70 inches. That's actually my height. So I can drag that down. So to convert it to feet, I can do equals convert again, and I can click on that and then press from unit is going to be meters and then comma, and then two is going to be feet. So if I start typing in F, then I get the list to reduce to feet. And you can always press tab to lock it in much faster than double clicking. Close my brackets there and I get this number, but I actually want to round this down. If I rounded this to the nearest whole number, it would round to six, but actually I want to round it down because eventually I want to have feet and inches. So I need to add something else. If I double click it before convert, I can actually use round. Now round down is the one I want to use because that will round it down and you can round it to the nearest whole number, to the nearest 100, to the nearest two decimal places, etc. Round will round it up or down depending on whether it's more or less than half, round down, round up will do as the label suggests, and round will round to the nearest multiple that you specify. So I'm going to do round down, press tab to lock that in. And then afterwards, I'm going to do a comma, always look at what is in bold, number of digits is going to be zero, and that implies round to the nearest full number. That's going to be five. And instead of dragging down, actually, I can actually move my mouse to the bottom right till it's a black cross. And if I double click it, it will drag down all the way till the end. Next, I'm going to want to do inches. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to copy it without the equal sign. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it here. But I actually want just what's left over after dividing by 12. So if I do this one divided by five times 12, that is going to leave me with what I'm looking for. But I'm going to just want to look at what's called the modulus in maths, which is just the, the remainder, what's left over. So there is a function for that. I'm again going to wrap this existing formula inside it. So equals mod, and then you have your number and your divisor. And my divisor is 12 because there are 12 inches in the foot. So I'm going to press enter and I get 10.08. This time I want to round, but not round up, just round. And then I'm going to do round to the nearest zero close my brackets and I get 10. So five feet, 10 inches is actually my height, etc., etc. This is just a coincidence, nine, eight, seven, not what was planned. So I'm going to bring these together and I'm actually going to take this one and I'm going to copy it without the equals. And I'm going to then take this one. I'm going to take the whole thing and I'm going to copy it. And we're going to kind of combine them together in this, but do a little bit more. I'm going to right click and paste. And this is going to give me the amount in feet. And I'm going to do ampersand speech marks or quotations, FT and 
space, close my quotations, ampersand again. This is the way that you join text to a value or to another cell, etc. And you always need quotations before and after text in a formula in Excel. Now I'm going to join it to the thing that I have for this one. And there's a trick. If you press Windows and V, you actually get the, not the last thing you copied, but a previous thing that you copied. So remember I copied this one. This is what I want. And then I can do, again, ampersand, speech marks, space, inches, close my speech marks, and press enter. And now I have five foot and 10 inches. Perfect. So this is what I want, and I can double click that as well. There you go. Perfect. And it is dependent. So let's say this person would change the height to 1.93. Now it would be six feet and four inches. By the way, if you have Copilot inside Excel, you can also ask Copilot for these kind of formulas. Here I asked it and it will give me all of that that I did. For the record, I actually knew this formula. I didn't have to look it up. <laughs> you can also ask it simpler questions. You could also say, what is 72 kilograms in pounds? And there you go. It will give you the formula like this. If you don't have Copilot, then it is dependent on which version of Excel you have. Then you can also look up the Copilot free on the internet and it can also give you these kind of functions. So from a web browser, you can go to Copilot like this and you can ask it in Copilot, what is 77 kg in pounds? This one will actually give you the full number, etc. All right. So let's move on to how to convert currencies. So I'm going to do is I'm going to write in this cell down here. I'm going to write USD slash GBP. I'm going to select that cell and go to the data tab in my Excel and choose currencies under data types. If you don't see it, you might need to click on there and choose currencies. And this only works with Microsoft 365. Then I can click on this icon and choose price and it will give me that price over there. And now I'm going to convert these by doing equals this number multiplied by this one. And I press enter. Now, if I drag it down, you're going to see an error. That is because I need to tell Excel to lock this cell by pressing the F4 button on my keyboard. Note that this has got dollars around it. It has nothing to do with currency in this context. It's just to tell Excel that I am locking it. So now if I drag down, I get this to show me that way. You can use the round as well if you want to round it to the nearest whole number. All right, dates. Dates is a completely different ball game. If I expand this, you'll see some of them are aligned left and some are right. The ones that are right are the ones that Excel recognizes as a date. The ones that are left are the ones that Excel does not. Now, this is all based on how your computer setting is, but you want it to match the document that you get. Now, this is a very hidden feature. It's not in a formula, but if you say copy these and select here and paste. I have these same ones again, but Excel thinks that this is the 8th of February, but actually if I follow the same logic as the other rows, this should probably be the 2nd of August. So if I select this second column and I go text to columns, this has nothing to do with text to columns. It's just that they put this feature in here. If I press next two times, because what I want to do has nothing to do with text to columns, I click on date and I choose here MDY. This is about the source. The source is month, day, year. One is the month, 13 is the day, year is 25. I press finish and now it converts it to the style that I want. From here, you can then convert the date format like this. My favorite way to do to show dates is to do control shift three or control and hashtag, which may not be above three in your computer, but here it will convert it to three letters for the month, which means that anyone can understand it if they are an English native speaker. So what about if I want the currency rate at that given date? You have this awesome function called stock history, and it works with stock prices or with currencies. You can press tab to lock that in. You get two inputs that you have to do, stock and start date. The others are in square brackets, which means they're optional. So the stock is going to be from this one. And then I can press a start date and the start date is going to be this cell. Then I close my brackets and I get that. 
I would say that it is safer to convert it to data types, just so you know that it's doing it right though. So what that has given is actually a four cell result with the headers, the date itself, and then the close number. But if we want it in the single cell, we won't find that useful. So I'm going to do equals index. And I'm going to do here, comma, two, comma, two. What the index function does is it will say return the nth row, the nth column from what you give me. And because here I had a four cell matrix, which is two by two, I want to return the second column, which is this, and the second row, which is this. So if I close my brackets, I would get two and two, which is that one, just 1.22. Close my brackets and I get just 1.22 in that cell. Drag it down and I get it like this. That is because I forgot to do F4 on M8. Perfect. And now I can also select this. And if I press control D, D for down, that will do like dragging down. All right. Well, if I then want to convert to British pounds as if it was that date, what I can do is I can combine all of those together by copying this and writing equals this one, the original amount. And then instead of multiply, I want to divide it because here I'm doing GBP to USD rather than USD to GBP. So then I'm going to paste it. Now, if I right click, I can paste and I can press enter and I get this. Notice that it's not that different, which is what you might expect from currencies. I could also use the rounding to round it and I can drag it down or double click it or control D. All right, well, that brings me to the end of this conversion video that I want to show you. I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. So check out my other videos for more up-to-date things. Thanks for watching.